So let's try out our first official circle shape, shape 9. Now I'm going to start with a new sketch and a front view. And I just want to build this big rectangle and then cut out from it. So let's go to our rectangle and click on the origin. And before I click again, let's look. From the front view, this shape has a height of 1.5 inches and a width of 2.25. So I want to drag my rectangle the direction I want it to go. And then it's asking me for my height, so I'm going to go ahead and type that in as 1.5. And I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard to go to my other measurement and type 2.25 before I hit enter. And once I have both the dimensions typed in, I'm going to hit enter. And now I have a fully constrained rectangle. I'm going to hit finish sketch. And I'm going to extrude this shape. It looks like it extrudes a total depth of 1.5 inches. And so let's type that in 1.5 and hit OK. And then I want to cut out this other rectangular shape. So let's start a sketch on this face. And grab our rectangle tool, and I want to make sure it's coincident to that top right corner. Click and drag, and click again. And we have two unconstrained lines. So I'm going to right click, and hit OK, grab my dimension tool, and I'm going to go to my home view to get a better look at this. And so let's start with this bottom line to this bottom edge. If we look over here, we can see that dimension is 0 0.25. And so I'm going to click, type in 0.25, and hit enter. And then if we look right here between these two, that is also 0.25. It's coming out of the top, but it's the same dimension. It's 0.25. So let's drag it up and type in 0.25. And now we have a fully constrained rectangle. Let's right click and hit cancel finish our sketch and hit extrude and let's cut this shape and how far does it cut inward well one inch so I'll type in negative one and hit OK and so now the shape is starting to look a little bit more familiar but if you'll notice shape 9 has these four circles cut out of it two are cut out of this face right here and then two are cut out of this face right here Let's start with these two circles on this bottom top view face. And let's start a new sketch. And I want to grab my circle tool. And there's two circles, so let's start by drawing those. Right click and hit OK. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make these two circles equal to each other. And so I want to grab my equal constraint and select both of these circles. And so what does that do? If I right click and hit OK, if I change the size of one circle, it changes the size of the other circle. That has nothing to do with the location of each circle. I can move them around freely, but even if I move them around, they will always be the same size. And so that's what the equal constraint does with circles. The next thing I want you to notice is these two circles, if you follow their center marks, they're clearly horizontal to each other. And so I want to grab my horizontal vertical constraint. And what this constraint does is it makes two pieces of geometry, either horizontal or vertical, depending on how close they are to either one. And so if I click on the two centers of these circles with this constraint, it'll make them always horizontal to each other. So if I right click and hit OK, if I move these circles up and down, they will always stay horizontal. Now I can move it left and right and they can change that dimension, but they will always be horizontal to each other. So I'm going to click off. And so now, what about the dimensions? Well, the first one I see is between the two center marks, there is a width of one inch. And so I'm going to grab my dimension tool, and I'm going to select both my centers and drag it down. And I'm going to tell that to be one inch. And if we go to our isometric view, we can kind of see what's going on here. And then I can also see from the center mark to this edge is 0 0.5. And so let's go ahead and click that center mark and this edge and drag that out as well. And let's type in 0.5 for that dimension. And then we have one more dimension on this face, this 0.5 from this edge to our center. So let's go ahead and select that, this edge to the center mark. And let's tell it to be 0.5 and hit enter. And if you'll notice, these two circles are still blue. This shape is still not fully constrained. And I'm gonna right click and hit cancel. And anytime I have shapes that are not constrained, I like to mess around with them and try to figure out why. And so if I look at the center marks, they are both black. They are constrained. I can't move the circles in place. 
but the outside edges are still blue. So if I click on those, you can see what the missing dimension is. These circles are equal, but they still don't know what dimension they're supposed to be. So if I click off and we grab our dimension tool, I can select one of the circles and tell it to be something. And what am I going to tell it to be? Well, if we look right here, we can find our answer. This says 4x diameter 0.5 through. And what that means is there are four of these. It's pointing to a circle. So there are four circles that have a diameter of 0.5 that extrude through the shape. In other words, all four circles have a diameter of 0.5 and all four cut through the shape. And okay, that's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and type in that dimension. We'll say 0.5 and hit enter. And now we have a fully constrained sketch. Let's go ahead and finish it and hit extrude and let's cut it through. And so we'll select both circles, drag them down, and go from distance to all, as in through all, and hit OK. And then all we have left are these last two circles. And so let's go ahead and do those and wrap up this shape. So we'll select this face and go to new sketch. And we can draw two more circles for ourselves. And just like before, let's tell these two circles to be equal. Right click OK. So these circles are equal forever and always. Now you might be wondering about the distance between these two circles as they're not marked up here. But if you follow their center marks, you can see that these are aligned and these two circles are aligned. And so if these two circles are one apart, if you follow the center marks, you can see that these two circles also have to be one inch apart. And so let me grab my dimension tool, grab these two centers, and tell them to also be one inch apart. And if you notice what happened, one of my circles raised up, one went down, and my one inch distance sort of went at a slant. I'm going to right click and hit cancel. And the reason that is, is I haven't told these two circles to stay horizontal with each other. That's why we did that earlier. And so let's go ahead and grab our horizontal vertical constraint and let's select the center of both our circles. And that automatically makes them horizontal to each other and makes our dimension horizontal. Let's right click and hit OK. And so if I click on the centers of my circles, they will always be one inch apart and they will always be horizontal to each other. And so what do we have left? Well, we also have to add this 0.5 inches from this far right edge to the center of our right circle. And so let's grab our dimension tool and go from the center of our circle to our right edge and tell that to be 0.5. And then if we look, the center of this circle is also 0.5 inches from the top. And so we'll click on the center mark and the top edge and tell that also to be 0.5. And then finally, let's give a diameter of 0.5 to the last two of our four circles. And so let's click on this circle and tell it to be 0 0.5. And remember, since we've told these two circles to be equal, if I add it to one, it automatically changes the other as well. And so now we have a fully constrained sketch. I can go ahead and go to finish sketch, hit extrude, select both my circles and cut them all the way through, hit OK. And if we look, we can see this hole is cut all the way through this face. The same thing is happening in our top view. Both of these holes are cutting all the way through. And if I double check, all of my sketches are fully constrained. And so we are done with this shape. Let's go ahead and save it as shape nine. Hit save and make sure it's saved in our data panel. And there it is. And there you have it.